No, I want to make sure that people are remember or are aware of if you haven't been watching these videos. Dr. Stevens has walkthroughs of of uh, the, the sections in the textbook and the way you get there is video lectures by chapter. And then this week I'm in chapter in chapter six about normal curves. And he walks you through all those pages in the textbook, you know, up into up until the problem sets. He even has a walkthrough for the summary worksheet. So you can do all those. He'll do this all by hand with the tables and formulas if that's your kind of thing. So uh, what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to use a, a, an online calculator to do all these calculations so we don't have to do it by formula. Because sometimes the formula is confusing. Sometimes you're not. Sometimes it's the way to go. Uh, cer certainly page 100, um, number two, I wouldn't use a calculator. I would, I, would use the, I would use that. And I made a post about, somebody asked about that question, and I made a post to it in, the, in, the, in this week's section one. If you're watching this in later semesters, I'm sure that's happened. Um, so here, let me come back and let me open up what my the Think Do book, and then I'm going to point you to this David Lane here. Let me. I don't know if you this is in your way, but David Lane. If you don't, I got it linked in Canvas and those online tools. But if you don't have that or you don't have that page open, you haven't bookmarked this yet. All you can do is Google da David Lane. I like, got yeah, David Lane. And then make sure to add the word normal because there was a David Lane who was a white supremacist, not a nice guy. Uh, he, he died in prison a little while ago. So what you want to do is go to that, add the normal, and take you right here. It's a fantastic calculator for working with these course. So we're on the standard normal curve, which means the standard normal curve means we're working with z-scores. The mean is zero. The standard deviation is one. And if they're asking us for the, the probability of of getting less uh, uh, of getting a z score less than 1.96 you just go to this calculator and let me see if i can't zoom this page zoom this one in a little bit um which will be better on this video the other thing i really like about this there's other normal curve calculation do graphing calculators have one that, that too but what i like about this one it gives us a picture of what we're looking for so this says less than 1.96 and of course that's the default thing and there's the probability Instead of having to go look that up, number up in the table, normal curve table, there's the answer. What if they want to know greater than 2.13? So we go above, we type in 2.13, and then off this calculator usually just recalculate it. And there's that probability. See how that gives us the nice little graph? That's, that's the area that we're looking at, the probability of what we're looking for. So what that did is that went, it did... It looked to use the number in the table and took that away from one. Well, actually, it probably used, didn't use it's something close to the number in the table. It's using some kind of formula to um, find it. Actually, it's a calculus the integral if anybody's done calculus. Um, so then how about, so, so far that's all really, I couldn't argue that the table's any easier than that. But when you come to this one, let's see, can I move this over? Oh, here we go. When you come to ones like these, to do it with a table, you'd have to look up the z-score of negative 1.21, write down that probability, look up the z-score for 2.1 theory, write down that probability and subtract them. We're here with the applet. I can say between negative 1.21 and then up to 2.13 and then let it, whoops, I should update it. I'll click calculate just in case, but look at that. Showed us the area, found the probability. Can you go look because this is a because this is a start exercise? I think you can go, you can go look the answers up in the back and find that. Okay, so hopefully that helps for that kind of question. And then the other thing that this calculator does is for something like number three. Here, let me zoom this out so you can see this. Uh, on this one, they're looking for a z-score. Where they aren't looking for any probability. That's what they're doing up here. Probability is area. Um, but here they want to tell, they get, they're giving us an area, 85%, 0.85. And they want to know the z-score that cuts that off. So with David Lane calculator, we want a value from an area. We have the area. The area in question number three is 85% or 0.85, 0 0.85. And we want below because that's the, that's the percentile, right? So See that? That's the area that cuts off 
the bottom 85%. And notice this, the Z-score table would probably say 1.04 because it's got a round. It only does two decimal places. And here we get a nice exact value. Um, and rarely does this calculator mess up. If it's messing up, I would restart your computer and do it because it's something unusual. Okay, and so remember, the thing you got to do is switch the value from an area when they give you an give you a probability to get the z-score. Now, if I want the, the that marks the 25th percentile, we just change this to 0.25. You know, update it. Mean zero, standard deviation one. We're still on the standard normal curve, and that would be the z-score. So that's the quartile, isn't that Q1? Uh, the 25 percent bound. So the z a z-score of negative a uh, 0.674 would cut off the bottom 25%. So that's the that's the lower quartile of a normal distribution, which we wouldn't want to deal with that because it's a normal distribution. Why use quartiles when it's symmetric? Okay. So how about, how about number four? Uh, the middle 95%. You can actually see that very easily on the table. But for this cal using this calculator, we want the middle to be 95%. See on the using the table, you'd have to take that away from one, divide it by two to get the two tail areas. We here we can just go between that. See that's the middle 95%, and there we go, the negative 1.96 and the positive 1.96. That's going to have a lot of meaning to us next week or after the exam one. Okay, um, and same thing we do the middle 95. Just change the 0.95. Now what happens when you switch it to? not be in the normal curve. Well, I've got a video that I just posted in the forum about Bob's potato. So go check that out. That's using this table. And then um, I'm using this calculator. And this is actually going to be something I'm going to ask you either on, on the exam or at some point. I think it's on the exam. So you just get different versions. Okay. Now, what else do I want to do here? I mean, I really want to do one where it's not the standard normal curve. So what about this one? They're telling us that the mean of 70 miles per hour with a standard deviation of four, and we're traveling at 76 miles per hour, what percent of the cars are traveling faster than you? So we're actually looking for the probability that that X is greater than 76. So let's see, I gotta, I gotta remember this. Actually, can I look at the table? I've got the calculator, I've got the book right here, my paper copy. So I'm just gonna come to David Lane and I want an area because I've got I've got values. I want to find the probability. I'm going to and then the mean for this distribution. See, we don't have to even calculate a z score. It says the mean is 70. The standard deviation for these cars is is uh, four. They're telling us, and we want to know what percent is traveling more than 76. So I'll change above 76. And lo and behold, it gives us that nice little graph, and that's the probability. A little over a little over six percent, right? Not unusual if you want to think about that. Okay, so I guess that I hope this helps. Uh, go check out my other videos. I posted these in the forum. They're also in that in that week seven overview that you want to go look at. Okay, give me a yell if you need some help.